Okay, welcome. Uh, my name is Laurie and I'll be guiding you through a yoga practice for about the next hour. I'm really excited to have you here and for you to be able to get on your mat. Uh, with this stay at home order, it's been certainly difficult for all of us to take time to um, practice yoga or to do something that is good for ourselves. So I'm glad that you're here and we will get started in child's pose today. So let's make our way there. So coming into child's pose, knees are wide on their mat, big toes touch behind, and we can settle our hips towards our heels and reach our hands out in front of us on our mat. Uh, we're going to settle our head onto the mat. You can also um, place a block underneath the forehead or even a folded up towel. So whatever is comfortable for you as you begin to settle in. Elbows can have a slight bend to them. Let's begin by taking a couple cleansing breaths here just to help us connect with our mat. So deep inhale through the nose, chest lifts, ribs expand, belly fills, open up mouth, exhale here. Let's take another deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale, release. Really pushing out the air from the bottom of the lungs, emptying them completely. And then begin to turn inward. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose, just notice the breath as it moves in and out of the nostrils. And then begin to lengthen out the breath. If the mind is still just starting to settle in, to tune into the breath, perhaps inhaling to a count of six or seven and then exhaling to that same count, six or seven, just to help lengthen and smooth out the breath. You can begin to amp up the breath by constricting the back of the throat and cultivating that ujjayi pranayama Dragging the breath in and down across the throat and then exhaling across the constricted throat begins to create a more audible breath, drawing our attention there. And a couple more rounds of breath. to the forearms, drawing them in a little closer to the body, and then begin to reach right arm high, opening up chest and shoulders to the right side, and then thread the needle underneath left armpit, allowing right temple to rest on the earth, beginning to open up through the outer part of the right shoulder. Left arm can stay where it is, or you can come up and walk it out to the front of the mat, coming up on Spider-Man fingertips here on the pads of the fingers. And then allow left armpit to press towards the earth. Release left hand down, 
Reach right arm high once again, opening up the chest and releasing right hand. Moving over to the left side, left arm reaches high, opening up to the left side of the room and then threading the needle underneath the right armpit. Left temple rests on the earth. Once again, right arm can stay where it is or it can walk out to the front of the mat, pressing armpit towards the earth. So we're opening up along the outer edge of the left shoulder as well as underneath the right arm. And releasing right arm, raising left arm high once again for that twist and release left hand down. Come up to tabletop pose, drawing knees underneath hips, hands are underneath shoulders, beginning to warm up the spine by moving through cat and cow. Begin by lengthening through the vertebrae, tailbone to crown of the head, reaching in opposite directions. On an inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, look up, roll shoulder blades back and down. Exhale, rounding the spine, pressing it up towards the ceiling as we tuck hips and chin. Inhaling back to cow pose, gaze up, exhaling to cat. Continue this movement through cows and cats matching your breath with the movement. One more round, inhale to cow pose, exhaling to cat. Come back to neutral spine. Step right leg back, pressing the ball of the foot into the earth. Hands are pressing firmly into the mat as well. Opening up right calf. Just for a moment. And then let's spin back heel down and really press the sole of the right foot into the mat. Opening up to modified side plank. So right arm reaches high. We open up chest and hips to the right side wall. Can stay here or we can increase that core engagement and balance and right heel can lift just to hip height. Left foot can angle towards the back of you, towards where the camera would be just to provide a little more stability if you need it. And then right arm begins to reach forward to the front of the mat, bicep by the ear. And then really reach foot and fingertips in opposite directions. Reaching right arm high. Release right arm down to the mat as well as right knee. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale to cat. Come back to neutral spine and then left leg steps back long for that calf opener on this side. And then spin that back foot flat, really plugging into the earth and then opening up hips and shoulders and chest to the left side wall. Fingers reach high. And then perhaps Left heel begins to float hip height. And then right or left arm reaches towards the front of the mat as right arm presses into the mat beneath us. Foot and fingertips are reaching in opposite directions and feel a nice long body stretch on that left side. Inhale, reach left arm high once again. 
Exhale, release hand and knee to mat. Inhale to cow pose, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Exhale to cat, round the spine. Come back to neutral here, tuck the back toes, spread fingers wide and begin to hover the knees just an inch or so off of the mat. Starting to engage the front body and the core. Staying here for just a couple breaths. You can also bend the elbows to really turn on front body, bending them towards the thighs. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pedal out our feet, bending one knee deeply and then the other. So moving into our first downward facing dog, we're pressing firmly through the thumb and the index finger. Give the head a little shake. Maybe nod it yes, shake it no. And then bend both knees deeply towards the earth. Tilt the hips upward and then straighten out the legs, pressing thigh bones to the back of the mat. Relax heels down. And then bring some stillness to this first downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. Inhale, look to the top of your mat, step forward for a halfway lift. Back is flat, shoulder blades move down away from the ears. Take a breath in here, exhale, fold. Moving into a ragdoll, feet come hip width apart. Knees can be bent. Crown of the head releases, neck releases long. And then you can grab opposite elbows and introduce a little sway front to back or side to side. Or perhaps the body just needs some stillness today and that's okay too. So we're lengthening out our vertebrae from tailbone all the way to the crown of the head. Could release the hands down toe heel feet together so big toes touch and then on an inhale sweep up to urdhva hastasana mountain pose shoulder blades can melt down the back kneecaps lift and then find your center of balance here maybe shifting front into the balls of the feet and then back into the heels and then find where you're really rooted down into the earth and steady. Gaze is soft. Let's take our right hand, grabbing onto our left wrist, reaching left arm tall, and begin to side bend over to the right side of the mat. Left hip is pressing to the left side. We're rooting down through both feet, but really take note of the left sole of the foot, planting it and pressing it into the earth as we reach left arm to the opposite side of the room. Good, inhale, reach high. And then moving over to the left side, grasping onto right wrist, reaching the right hand overhead grounding down through the right sole of the foot, right hip presses towards the right side of the room. Inhale back to center. Exhale forward fold, hands through heart center. Inhale to that half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands and step back into high plank pose. So pause here in our high plank. We're going to begin to turn on the core a little bit in this plank by taking toe steps out to the outer edges of the mat on each side. So take the right foot outside of the edge of the right side of your mat, then back to center. Left foot to the left side, back to center. And then continue a nice and sl slow controlled tapping one side over to the next. Shoulders are over wrists here. Belly is pulled in. 
crown of the head is reaching long. Right tap, and then the left, and right, left, and we have two more on each side. Continue to press earth away. Knees can also drop staying in a modified high plank. Pause here. Shift forward just an inch or so, bending the elbows lower all the way to the belly. Tops of the feet press into the mat. Inhale, low cobra. Press elbows to the back of the room. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, low cobra. Again, pressing the tops of the feet firmly into the mat. Crown reaches forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, one more low cobra. Let's take an extra breath here. Inhale. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, high plank, pushing the earth away. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breath here in your down dog. We're gonna move through that sun A, one breath per movement. Take an inhale. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, lift to the top of your mat, step forward, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep up, Urdhva Sasana. Exhale, side bend over to the right. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back, lower to the belly. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breath in and out. Inhale, step forward, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, center. Exhale, side bend to the left. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, lower all the way or halfway to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath here, in and out. Another breath. Inhale, right leg high. So the leg can be about hip height, pressing the ball of the foot and the bottom of the foot to the back wall. Toes are angled down. And then relax left heel towards the mat as well. And then begin to open up the hip to the right side for a right side body stretch. And then Right heel drops towards right glute. So this is a nice opening through the front quad and the hip flexor. Continue to press the earth away with both hands relatively evenly. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw knee to nose, set right foot down next to right thumb, setting up for a low lunge. So crown of the head reaches long, back heel is lifted, front knee is over front ankle. We're gonna plant left hand inside of right foot and then inhale to a low lunge twist. Right arm reaches high, shoulders stack one over the other. Continue to lift through the back heel
inhale, reach right fingertips high. Exhale, release them down. Planting both hands, moving into standing splits. We're pressing through right foot, left leg lifts. So notice if hips have opened up to the left side. If so, let's bring left hip down so it is square to the mat. And then release crown of the head here. Hands can also rest on a block or stack books or fold a towel, whatever you have in your home. And one or both hands can also move to the standing ankle here or can remain grounded. hands are at our ankle, release those hands and then inhale, lengthen through the left leg. Exhale, left foot meets right, forward fold. Inhale to chair pose. So we're going to bend our knees and shift our hips back. And then we're going to rise to our chair. Inner thighs are squeezing together. You can lift all 10 toes here to shift the weight to the heels. The torso rises. We take our belly button and we pull it up towards low ribs to take the sway out of low back. And if this is uncomfortable in the low back, you can also take feet hip width apart. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, airplane arms. So we're sweeping both arms back and reaching fingertips to the back of the mat. Squeezing shoulder blades together, a little up dog chest. Inhale, back to chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, moving through your flow all the way or halfway to Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breath in and out. Inhale, left leg high. Again, pressing left foot to the back of the room. Left hip is squared to the earth. And then begin to open up the hips to the left side of the room. Left heel comes towards the glutes. Right heel relaxes down. Inhale, lengthen that leg back behind you. Exhale, draw knee to nose, set left foot down next to left thumb. And if the foot doesn't make it there, go ahead and just help it up with the hand, stepping forward. Left knee is over left ankle, back toes are lifted. We plant the right hand inside of the left arch of the foot and then inhale to a low lunge twist. Right heel again extends to the ceiling behind us. Crown of the head reaches forward. Gaze can be up at the thumb or over at the side wall. Inhale, reach through left fingertips. Exhale, release it down. Hands are on either side of the right foot, moving into standing splits here. We're going to push off of left foot as right heel reaches back behind us. Crown of the head releases to the earth. And our two sides are always different. So if the balance didn't work on the other side, you can try it on this side. One or both hands to the standing ankle, just to increase our need for balance. release those hands down. Inhale, lengthen through standing leg. Exhale, right foot meets left forward fold. Inhale, back to chair. So we were in this chair once before. 
perhaps sitting a little deeper in the chair, dropping our hips. Pinkies are turning inward. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, power chair. So our glutes drop towards the earth. Thighs become approximately parallel to the earth and hands are reaching towards the front of the room. Belly hovers over thighs. Biceps are by the ears. So deep in the breath here in this intense pose. Inhale, stay for your exhale. Inhale, back to chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out. So we will move through that namaskar, one breath per movement. So take a round of breath here. Exhale it out. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step forward, low lunge. Inhale, twist. Exhale, release. Inhale, standing split. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to chair pose. Exhale, airplane arms. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Lower chaturanga. Inhale, upward, exhale, downward. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, step forward, low lunge. Inhale, twist. Exhale, release. Inhale, standing split. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, power chair. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, and move through your flow. Inhale, and exhale. Take a breath here, in, and out. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, step forward, low lunge. Inhale, twist. Exhale, release. Inhale, standing split. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, airplane arms. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back, lower, halfway. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, step forward, low lunge. Inhale, twist. Exhale, release. Inhale, standing split. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, power chair. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Lower all the way or halfway to chaturanga knowing that you can skip this flow at any time and just move back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in and out. Another breath in 
and out. Come to your knees for hero's pose. So we drop our knees and just sit back on our heels and just take a moment here to reconnect the breath. You can always take a child's pose anytime you need to grab a drink. But this is a good time now that we have begun to warm up the body and focused in on our breath to reconnect with it and also set an intention for our practice. Perhaps bringing something or someone to mind for which you want to dedicate this practice. Eyes can come back open. And then we'll move back into downward facing dog. Take a breath in and out. Inhale, look to the top of your mat, step forward for a halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, back into chair. So sliding into chair as if you're sliding your back down a wall behind you. We've been to chair before, so it's familiar to us. So sitting our hips back, making sure the balance is in our heels once again. And then just sit with us, taking breath here. And moving into one-legged mountain, lifting left knee up. So straightening through right leg. Then lifting left knee up towards the chest as if you're stepping up onto a big step out in front of you. Toes are pulled towards your knee. Hands can come to heart center. And then slowly begin to hinge at the hips. We're stepping back into crescent legs here, slow and with control. Stepping left back, leg back long behind us. And then finding our crescent lunge legs. You may need to scoot right foot closer to the outer edge of the mat just to widen the stance. Back heel is lifted. And then when you find your crescent legs, inhale and reach arms high. Inner thighs are squeezing towards the center. But back heel lifts, allowing us to bend a little deeper into the front leg. Hands come back to heart center here. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, reaching through the crown of the head. And then hinge about 45 degree angle over the front thigh. And then begin to move into revolved crescent. Left elbow comes outside of right knee. Gaze can be at the side wall. Continue to press right heel into the earth to lift up out of the right hip joint and hip crease on this side. Inhale, back to high crescent. Then pivot both toes over to the left side mat, five point and star, reaching hands to opposite sides of the room, lifting heart center upward. And then hands can come to hips, angling heels outward, toes inward, moving into prasarita. So take a moment here to lengthen through the crown of the head and then begin to hinge at the hips, pause halfway, Reaching tailbone behind you, crown of the head in front. Take an inhale here, and then fold deeply into this wide-legged forward fold. Hands can come underneath shoulders. Crown of the head releases, release the neck, maybe even give it a little shake. Then hands can stay here, or you can also reach to opposite toes, grabbing onto them with peace fingers allowing you to fold deeper into this forward fold. And 
and shift your weight into the balls of the feet, bringing hips in line with the ankles. Release big toes, hands come back underneath shoulders. Inhale back to that half lift. Stay for the exhale. And then inhale, rising back to standing. And then shifting both feet forward, coming up on that back heel, back into your crescent lunge legs. Front knee is over front ankle. Stay just for a breath here. Then hands can come to heart center, stepping back up into that one-legged mountain pose. So if you need to take a couple steps there, you can do that. But bring that leg back up, knee towards the chest, and then crossing left ankle over right knee. We're moving into a standing figure four. So we begin to drop hips back behind us. Pulling left toes towards our knee as we press left knee towards the earth, opening up the left hip. You can stay here with tall torso, or you can begin to hinge forward, shifting hips to the back of your mat, really opening up through the right hip as well. Good, coming back up to tall spine. Uncrossing the leg, lifting the knee, and then we begin to move into warrior three, hands at heart center. So making a giant T with the body. Left leg reaches back, right leg is moving towards straight. Oop, stepping down here, and then right back up. Good, stay for a breath here, inhale. Exhale, left foot meets right, sweeping up to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, moving through your flow. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath in and out. One more in and out. Inhale, step forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach tall mountain. Exhale, sitting back into your chair. So perhaps dropping hips a little bit closer to the earth below. Good hands can come to heart center, moving into that one-legged mountain. Right knee lifts this time, stepping out forward as if you're stepping onto that big step. Toes are pulled towards your nose. And then beginning to move slowly with control, hinging at the hips, drawing right leg back behind you long and stepping it down to crescent legs on this side. Again, setting up those legs. And then shoulders come over hips and arms reach high. Good, back heels lifted. Right hamstring is reaching towards the ceiling and the wall behind you. Hands come to heart center, lengthen through the crown of the head as we hinge forward, take a breath in. Exhale, revolve crescent, right elbow outside of left knee. We continue to lengthen on our inhales and on our exhales, perhaps maybe turning a little bit deeper into this twist that's coming from mid-back. Good, 
Inhale, back to crescent lunge. And pivot towards the right side of your mat, moving into a second prasarita. Taking a moment here to reach arms high to that five-pointed star, lifting through the heart. And then on an exhale, begin to hinge at the hips, angling toes towards the center. Stop halfway, inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head. And on an exhale, fold deeply. And then let's take the hands at the base of the spine. Palms are pressed towards each other, intertwine the fingers here. You can also take a towel to create some space between the shoulders and hold the towel on either end. And then hands can rest here or begin to float up towards the ceiling. Feeling an opening through collarbones and in the shoulders. Move shoulders away from the ears. Release the hands down. Plant the hands. Inhale to a halfway lift. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, rise to tall torso. And then begin to pivot toes towards the front of the room. Back heel lifts, moving back to those crescent legs, reaching arms high just for a breath. In and stay for the out. Hands come to heart center here, and then stepping up once again, one-legged mountain, right knee lifts. And then we begin to cross right ankle over left knee, and then sitting back into our chair as we move into figure four. And torso can stay tall, or we can begin to hinge at the hips. Resting forearms on our right shin as we shift our hips to the back of the mat. Right toes are pulled towards our knee. Right knee presses towards earth. Good, coming back to standing. Uncross the knee here, bringing that knee back up, and then stepping it back long for warrior three, hands are at heart center. Staying for a breath in. Exhale, right foot meets left. Inhale, reach high, Urdhva Hastasana. Open up the chest, lift heart center here, cactus the arms. Inhale, rise and reach. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Moving through your flow or to downward facing dog. Breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Another breath in. And release. One more. In. And out. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, draw right knee to right tricep. Give it a tap. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, high. Exhale, right knee to left tricep, little twist. Inhale, high. Exhale, step forward, right foot next to right thumb. Moving into Virabhadrasana 1 or Warrior 1. So back heel spins flat. Right knee is over right ankle. And then begin to press the earth away, feeling our feet root down, and then rising to our warrior one. And 
You can take your hands to your shoulders, helping you square shoulders to the front of the room. Left inner thigh is angling towards the center. Shoulders are over hips. Inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, airplane the arms. So reaching arms back, little up dog chest. Gaze is out in front of your toes, a, about a foot or so. So keeping legs right where they're at, as well as the torso, taking our arms and reaching them to the front of the mat, biceps by the ears, fingers are active. Long line of energy pressing through back sole of the foot and moving through fingertips. Deep inhale here. Exhale, sweeping arms back, airplane arms. Inhale, reaching forward. Exhale, reaching back. Inhale, reaching forward. Exhale, reaching back. Inhale, back to warrior one. Hands are at our hips, moving into pyramid pose. So let's step that back foot up, squaring our hips to the front of the mat. And that's gonna depend on your anatomy. For some people, both feet facing forward is a good place to be. Um, for me, it works to angle that back foot a little bit. Hips are square. Left arm is going to reach high. Drawing the crown of the head upward, begin to reach left arm forward, keeping back relatively flat. Hips shift to the back of the mat. And then we begin to fold over that front thigh. Hands can come to the shin or to the mat. Once again, you can also use a block to rest the hands, bringing the earth a little closer to you. Inhale, lengthen through that spine, and on the exhale, find some release here, folding over the front thigh. And then notice where you might be holding some tension. Could actually be in the shoulders, relax those, or in the jaw. Release the neck. Draw attention to the left ball mound of the the right ball mound of the foot and really press it into the earth. Then moving into revolved pyramid, I like to place a block inside of the right foot, place my left palm there, and then begin by lengthening through the spine first, drawing the crown of the head forward. So find space there and then begin to twist open to the revolved pyramid. Right arm reaches high, shoulders begin to open up to the right side. So this is a pretty intense twist here, so continue to deepen the breath. right hand down move your block step left foot up next to right inhale to a halfway lift exhale fold moving into a rag doll pose so feet come hip width apart once again Padagustasana takes the peace fingers wraps them around big toes inhale to a halfway lift exhale fold into your rag doll releasing the head Elbows can come out to the side walls, helping you pull into this forward fold. Belly is pulled in. Shift your weight into the balls of the feet and notice how that changes the stretch through the backs of the legs. Good, release those toes down. Inhale to your halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hand, step right leg back long behind you. Spin back, heel down. 
Moving into Virabhadrasana 1 on this side or Warrior 1. So pressing earth away, rise to your Warrior 1. Front knee is over front ankle. Again, we can adjust the shoulders, squaring them off. Right inner thigh is spiraling in towards the center of the center of the mat. Inhale deep. Exhale, airplane those arms. Pinkies are rotating inward. Keep the bend in the front knee. Continue to press firmly into the back foot as well. Well, up dog chest, crown is reaching long. Inhale, reaching arms towards the front. Active fingers. Inhale, reach. Exhale, airplane the arms. Inhale, reach. Exhale, draw them back. Inhale, reach. Exhale, sweep back. Inhale, warrior one. Good, hands can come to the hips. Stepping back foot up a foot or so. Setting up pyramid pose on this side. Again, square the hips first. Right arm reaches high. And then begin to hinge forward, reaching crown of the head and arm long. Tailbone reaches back. And then begin to fold further over the front left thigh. Releasing the neck. Lifting left kneecap is gonna allow the hamstring to release by engaging the front of the leg. Once again, notice where you're holding tension. Find softness wherever that may be. Let's take that block inside of the right foot or left foot, right hand settles on it. Lengthen through the spine here. And then moving into revolved pyramid pose. Drawing left hip back as right hip shifts forward slightly. that hand down. Move the block to the side. Step right foot up next to left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Sweeping all the way up. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hand. Step back, move through your flow. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, left knee to left tricep, give it a tap. Inhale, leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, high. Exhale, knee to right tricep with a twist. Inhale, high. Exhale, set left next to right. Last downward facing dog of our practice. Take a breath in. And open mouth, exhale. Another breath in. And release. One more in. And out. Look to the top of your mat, step forward, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then coming down onto your seat. 
Good, so moving on to our back. Coming all the way down here. Just draw the knees into the chest, giving ourselves just a little squeeze. Maybe you rock from side to side. And then plant our feet onto the mat. Heels are drawn in towards your seat, moving into a couple bridge poses here. So hands are down along their side, palms are face down. And then begin to press the head into the mat just to tuck the shoulder blades slightly. And then press low back into the earth, taking the natural curve out of low back here. Really feel a connection with the mat. And then on an inhale, press through both feet as our hips lift up towards the ceiling. Chin remains neutral, gaze is up at the ceiling above us. And then continue to press through inner thighs. You can also tuck shoulder blades and clasp hands underneath the glutes. And then really press through both feet to lift hips a little bit higher. Squeeze inner thighs together as if there was a block between the knees and you're trying to hold it in place. Inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, release it down. Pressing low back into the mat once again. And if you practice wheel, you can move into a wheel here as well. I'm going to cue bridge pose one more time. So feet are drawn in towards the seat. And then on an inhale, pressing through the feet, we lift up. Again, hands can clasp underneath the glutes, drawing shoulder blades together. And really pressing evenly through both feet to lift. So stay here with the breath, glutes are squeezing, inner thighs draw towards each other. Two more cycles of breath, press through, lift hips a little bit higher, inhale, exhale, release down. Good. Feet can come to the outer edge of the mat, and then just drop one knee towards the center and the other windshield wiper, those knees or the hips out. Good, bring the knees back into the chest. Little rock from side to side. Good, feet can come down, moving into a supine twist. So hands can come to cactus arms or you can tee them out to the sides, palms face down. We're going to take right leg over left, moving into twisted root, shins rise up towards the ceiling, and then we're going to drop the knees over to the left side of our mat. Gaze can remain up at the ceiling. We're really pressing right shoulder and shoulder blade into the earth or you can shift the chin over towards right shoulder, taking your gaze to the right side. Good, knees back to center. Untwist the legs. And then moving into a supine half pigeon on this side as well. So right ankle crosses over left knee. And then like we were in standing pose, we are taking our toes and pulling them towards our knee and pressing our right knee away from the body. And this may be enough for you here. Otherwise, you can also draw the left knee in towards the chest and Clasp the hands around the back of the left thigh, perhaps using your elbow to press right knee away from you. And if your hips are really open and you'd like to move deeper, you can also cradle the right shin with 
both hands clasped and then left foot perhaps touches down or even goes long out in front of you. But if you move into this and either the head or the low spine is coming up off the floor, move back to the position you were right before that where you can contact the earth with the full spine. releasing that leg down, uncrossing the leg. And then let's move over to the other side. Left ankle crosses over right knee. We're pressing the left knee away from us. You have the option to stay here or perhaps grabbing on to the right thigh, drawing the shin towards the chest. Right leg can go long uh, and reach up above you or the knee can remain bent. And again, you can move a little deeper by cradling the shin in the arms. Remember our sides are not always the same. So you may be more open in one hip versus the other and that's completely normal, and just honor that by making the adjustments that your body calls for. And releasing those legs back down, uncross the knee here, just a little lift of the hips to realign the spine. And then arms come out to that T or cactus, those arms once again. This time left leg crosses over right. We press thighs together, shins lift, and supine twist over to the right side. So right, or knees drop to the right side. Left shoulder and shoulder blade press into the mat. Perhaps gaze shifts over to the left thumb. our breath we're slowing it down knees come back to center uncross and then moving into a happy baby pose our final pose before moving into Shavasana so knees come in towards armpits and we're capturing the tops of our, or the bottoms of our feet and pressing them down towards the earth as the feet press back into the hands. Again, we want full spine to be in contact with the mat. So if you find that low back or head has to come up, you can switch your grip. You can move it to the ankles or even behind the thighs here. So whatever works for you to be able to press that spine into the mat. And then rocking from side to side might be something that your body is calling for. I like to straighten one leg for a final hamstring stretch and then moving over to the other side. And then release the feet, draw knees in towards the chest and then take a deep breath in here forehead to the knees, and then open up, mouth exhale, releasing down onto the earth, taking up some space in your home, spreading the feet, allowing toes to just relax open, arms go wide, palms are traditionally face up, but they can be face down also, and then sinking into the earth, and then begin to notice once again, where the earth is supporting you. And with every exhale, releasing further into those spaces, no need to hold the body up. You are in a safe place and you can release. Head is
gaze heavy, jaws relaxed, tongue comes off the roof of the mouth, softness is found between the eyebrows, release. Begin to deepen the breath here. Bring some movements to the fingers and the toes. Draw arms overhead for a long body stretch. Feet and hands reach to opposite ends of the room. The knees be come in towards the body and you roll over onto the right side into seedling pose. And take a moment here to come back to the intention that you set at the beginning of your practice, drawing that intention to mind. And pressing the body upward into a cross-legged seated position. Eyes can remain closed or down at the earth in front of you. Hands can come to heart center. And I want to thank you for joining me and being able to get to your mat and find time for yourself and doing something that is good for your mind and your body and your spirit. I wish you and your family remain well in this time. And until next time, we will end with a breath together. Deep inhale through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Bowing forward. Namaste. Thanks everyone.